We've just had a real flavour of what we do within IDF. The, the, as we said, we've got uh, over 100 projects that we're uh, currently working on. And uh, the last two or three years, though, we've got much, much better at focusing in on our priority areas and, and looking to progress those things that are, are most important within an important work program. So the IDF work program, and Michael went through it, we couldn't find a single item that didn't uh, feature in importance for the uh, dairy sector. But um, in order to make sure that we're delivering the most value in the most timely way for um, the global dairy sector, we've put increased focus on, on a number of focus areas. You saw those in terms of sustainability, nutrition, food safety and quality, underpinned by that critical area of standards. But also within that we've been looking at priority work that we, we are looking to deliver over the um, the course of the next year. So I'm just going to share with you the, the focus. It's a bit of a summary of what my colleagues have already presented. But what we're, we're looking to deliver in 2016, and I'm also going to explain a little bit more about the why. You've already heard it, but I'm, I'm going to emphasize it. So starting with that work uh, just alluded to by, by Yap around uh, working with uh, particularly ISO and AOAC with respect to developing, uh, it's actually eight standards analytical standards relating to the measurement of the components that are in infant formula. And we want to take that in a united way to Codex, the Codex Committee for Nutrition for Special Dietary Uses, which sets the infant formula standards, which pretty much sets the way we've got to manufacture and measure and verify the quality of our products on a global basis. And imagine... Imagine a situation where we didn't have that harmonization. Imagine a situation where IDF, ISO, and AOAC were all going in with slightly different perspectives, slightly different approaches. Firstly, it's going to complicate the process and make it much more difficult. Secondly, um, we're in danger of having a whole raft of standards which could be adopted, uh, those analytical methods, if you want, adopted to various different degrees by different geographies. And then if you're looking at global trade, imagine having to do three lots of different analyses in order to meet, your, um, to meet three separate standards in order to do trade. It just doesn't make any sense. Because it's three times the cost. It's probably a lot more than three times the cost. It's certainly three times the complexity. Really, really important work. Often under the waterline. Often not seen as sexy. We need to promote this because it really is critical to the effectiveness and efficiency of the sector. And with that, our ability to provide this dairy nutrition, YARP's COGS, ultimately leading to turning that nutritional security wheel. We're going back to revisiting this nitrogen conversion factor. I keep thinking we've won the war, but realizing we've just won the latest battle. This is something we, we keep revisiting. We keep having um, a drive to simplify the nitrogen conversion factor. This is a way of determining the protein content of milk. First you turn that protein into nitrogen, you measure the nitrogen, and then using a factor you, you, um, you multiply that nitrogen content to, to uh, determine the protein content. And there's a drive to simplify this to make it 6.25. But what that would do would reduce the current factor that's used for dairy from 6.38 to 6.25 and improve the factor or, or, or change the factor for um, other protein sources such as soy from 5.71 up to 6.25. And so what you say? Well, that's 2%. 638 to 625 is 2%. And so by the slight of, uh, of hand and a pen, you'd essentially be wiping out 2% of the world's milk protein. Why is that important? Well, obviously 2% of the world's milk protein is worth billions of dollars. Tens of billions of dollars. Moreover, it's equivalent to roughly the entire production of Australia and New Zealand put it in context. Why would you waste that environmental performance of the dairy sector and have to produce the equivalent again of that particular protein to feed the world? And particularly as we've got to increase our, our, uh, the amount of dairy to, to meet you know, future food security. So on the one hand, I, I have a personal frustration with the drive for sustainability through many intergovernmental organizations, but also the tolerance of um, inadequate and non-science-based approaches to standardization. And it's something that we need to keep fighting, and hopefully eventually we will win the war, but it does feel like we have to win lots of battles in the process. So just those two billions of dollars of value 
to the dairy sector from that work. Also, billions of dollars of value, but also the right to operate, quite frankly. And a number of battles we've been fighting for years, but we, we constantly do. This is, this is with respect to saturated fat and trans fat. The evidence is compelling now. Dairy doesn't do the things people previously said it did because of the saturated fat content or the trans fatty acid, the naturally occurring trans fatty acids within dairy. But we need to make sure that's embedded in policy at the global level. And we need to connect better with the uh, World Health Organization in particular. But to do that, we need to particularly connect with those key influencers that in turn need to influence the World Health Organization. We do not want fat to drag us back. Brilliant success with sugar. Can't overemphasize that win. We didn't want sugar, lactose, the natural milk sugar, to become the next milk fat. You've got sugar in your products, natural lactose. We didn't want to end up in a similar situation. So we're fighting back on fat. We've done something I think is extremely valuable long term with respect to uh, lactose. The World um, Committee for F Food Security, um, founded around 1950, it's been around a long, long time, but it's starting, it's, it, I refer to this as a sleeping giant. It's awakening and it's starting to gain prominence, particularly because it adopts a very public-private partnership approach to uh, its operations. Um, as you'll hear um, this afternoon, it is trying to be very, very inclusive with society, with business, um, with governments, because it realizes, rightly so, I think, that the way forward needs to be multi-stakeholder if we're going to make progress in this space. But to do so, we talked about we need to make the connection between food um, and nutrition, rather, and uh, sustainability in a more holistic way. We certainly don't have all the answers at this point in time, but neither does anybody else. And I, uh, I do recommend you come along and look at the work that's been done on the dairy sustainability framework later this afternoon, which will in fact show how we are developing at comprehensive frameworks around sustainability. That'll match the great work we're doing in nutrition so that we can put the two together and end up with a much better picture. Although not, a, not necessarily a, priority, a high priority for IDF and certainly something we won't deliver in 2016 at the moment, we are looking at... Uh, working very collaboratively on another aspect of protein uh, quality. This, this is the digestibility and the availability of the, um, of the protein through its release as amino acids through digestion. And we've got some really exciting uh, work that's been done on this new method called DIAS, which shows the superiority, superiority of dairy protein over, over substitute sources. And it's up to 30% uh, superior, certainly to some vegetable proteins. And what we want to make sure is that this replaces the current methodology, which truncates the uh, quality of protein due to the current methodology used at 100%. So dairy is 100%, but then many other proteins are 100%. This actually provides a much more discerning uh, view of, um, of protein quality. And I can't overemphasize again how important that is in a world where we can't afford to squander our nutrition and our environmental resources when used to produce that nutrition on inadequate policy based on, if you want, inadequate scientific input. Now, in time, much, much aspects of what we do in science becomes inadequate because we learn, we learn more. We have new developments. But let's make sure the latest thinking is, is accommodated, particularly as we try and close this nutritional security gap. And quite frankly, the, two, the work there on protein quality um, is very, very important, but let's not new, lose the battle on protein content at the top there on the nitrogen conversion factor, because all the gains we could make in protein quality could be lost by protein content. The two go hand in hand. And it's billions of dollars of value and billions of people's health that we're talking about here. Getting high quality quality protein is a key part of the nutritional security debate. Um, Marianne talked about the food matrix, uh, um, the dairy matrix. There's been an overly simplistic view of nutrition. One plus one equals two. It doesn't work that way. It's highly synergistic. The interaction of the food components provide a range of benefits. 
the um, individual food components do not behave in the same way when consumed within different matrices. And we've got to consider that they're consumed within diets and they're consumed within lifestyles. This is not something that just lends itself to a chemistry lab or an animal trial. It's complex, but we're starting to get a much, much better picture. There's a lot of work to be done, but we need to push that message around the dairy matrix, and it's high on our priority list. And it needs to feed into all of those intergovernmental organizations that are looking to set policy. And finally, Brian uh, alluded to this really important work on biodiversity that uh, we're working on at the moment. It's a very complicated area, biodiversity. But it's also a very topical area and it's a very in integral area to sustainability. So let's make a good start. Let's, let's at least get our consensus. Let's, let's get as many of the technical facts we can together to create uh, a perspective at least we can grow from. Without that, we're going to have some serious chaos as we try and define sustainability. Um, so high priority and something that, uh, again, we're looking to push in 2016. So ladies and gentlemen, I think this demonstrates that we are fulfilling our purpose. We are reaching global consensus on important science and technology related matters. We are taking those to the key intergovernmental organizations. And moreover, this work will deliver significant value both in dollar terms to the, uh, the dairy sector. And at the end of the day, we need dollars to make the chain work. That dairy nutrition will not be there if there are not dollars to drive farmers to produce the milk, processors to process that milk, distribution and marketing. It's important. It is a commercial activity, but it's a commercial activity that delivers huge benefits. And of course, those benefits will result in better health and wellness for billions of people. Thank you very much.